third graders. I'm so happy to see you today. I wanted to share a writing strategy with you that good writers do when they want to edit. And our strategy today is called, Do You Need the And? And this strategy is helpful to decide when you want to keep an and in your sentence and when you want to rewrite the sentence. Um, and this is helpful because when your readers are reading your work, your writing, you want them to be able to understand it and really enjoy it. And sometimes what happens is we put too many ands in our sentence and the ideas don't relate. And so it gets really confusing for the reader to try and really understand what's going on. And then they kind of lose interest and stop reading. And the other problem is sometimes we put too many ands in our sentence and the ideas might relate, but the sentence becomes super, super long. And we don't want our readers to have to read something super, super long because again, it kind of gets hard to read and they lose interest. We want our writing to be super engaging and interesting for our readers so that they enjoy it and want to continue to read. So here is how our strategy works. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to reread whatever it is that, our, that we wrote. And on that second reread, as we reread, we're going to look for all of the ands that are in our writing and we're going to highlight them. You can choose any color you want, red, green, purple, yellow, whatever. Then after you highlight all of your ands in your, in your story or your writing, you're going to go back and you're going to read the sentence that the and comes in or the ands come in. And you're going to find your first and and you're going to look at the beginning before the and and what happens after the and and see if those ideas relate. And if they relate, you can keep your and. If they don't relate, then you have to rewrite your sentence. If you have more than one and in your sentence, then you have to, you're have you gonna have to rewrite because we only want to have, good writers only usually have about one and in a sentence, maybe two sometimes, depending on how the sentence is written. Again, because we don't want that sentence to get too long. So after we've decided if we should keep the and or we have to rewrite, then we go back and we rewrite the sentence. Super simple, right? All right, so I have an example for us. In my example, I've already highlighted our ands just to make it a little bit faster for our video. But my, my original sentence says, once I was walking to Central Park and there was a flock of pigeons and I went closer to see while they were all gathered together. And do you know what I saw? It's a pretty long sentence. So as you can see, I have an and there, I have an and there, and I have an and there. So they're already, I found them all, I've highlighted them, I'm going to go back and reread the sentence up until that second and. So once I was walking to Central Park, there was a flock of pigeons. Well, I think those ideas go together because seeing the flock of pigeons goes with what, what I saw while I was walking in the park. So I'm going to keep that first and. Now remember, I said you shouldn't have more than one and in your sentence. So because I have two more, I'm going to put my period there when I go to rewrite. And I'm going to ignore that and, and I'm going to look at these two sentences now and see if I want to keep this and or if I have to rewrite. So this says, I went closer to see while the, why they were all gathered together. Do you know what I saw? Well, I think they kind of go together because they're talking about what they saw, what, why the pigeons were all gathered together. but. I feel as though that question needs to stand alone so that it draws in the reader's curiosity and I want it to have, be more powerful. It's more engaging for the reader. So I think I'm going to put a period after the word together and make this question stand on its own as a separate sentence. So I rewrote it here. Let's see how my rewrite sounds. See, let's see if it sounds better. Once I was walking to Central Park and there were a lot of, and there, ooh, excuse me, let me start that over again. Once I was walking to Central Park and there was a flock of pigeons, I went closer to see why they were all gathered together. Do you know what I saw? I think that does sound better. I think that the shorter sentences help me understand the information of what's going on. And that question really does pique my interest as a reader because I want to know what's going on. What did the writer see? Right? So I also have another example. I have a piece of writing. Um, that, I, that I wrote to one of your writing seeds. It's the picture with the little pug and the blanket. And so I called it Pug and the Blanket. 
And I'm going to read it for you so that you understand what's going on in the story. And then we're going to go back and we're going to try the strategy again. All right, let's see if you can help me as we go. Ah, the water is so cold. One hot, steamy summer day, my friends and I were playing in the sprinklers and doing water games. My friend Maddie's mom said it was time to go home. When I got home, I had a surprise waiting for me. A puppy! I named her Rosie and took her for a walk. On the walk, Rosie saw a squirrel and I didn't have a good hold on the leash and Rosie ran away and got lost. I looked all around the neighborhood and gave up and went home. My mom had seen her in the neighbor's yard and brought her home. Next walk, I'm going to hold the leash really tight. So that's my story and I know I have some ands in there. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to just kind of skim my work and just to highlight the ends. I'm not even going to have to really read. I'm just going to highlight the ends. I'm going to go back and reread the sentences with the ends after I highlight them all. All right. So I'm going to look and I'm going to kind of run my finger under and I'm going to look for the word and. I don't have any in the first line. Oh, I got one there. So I'm going to highlight that. Oh, I got another one in the third line. I'm going to highlight that. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, there's one here. Oh, there's one here. Keep going. There's another one. Ooh, I have a lot of ants. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Ooh, look at all these ants. Oh, there's another one. And that's it. So let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine ands. So now our next step is to see if I need that and in that sentence, if it, if it connects the two ideas together that relate, or do I need to get rid of it and rewrite it? So let's see. My first and comes here. And this sentence ends here. So I've got two ands in the sentence. So I'm going to read the information before the and on this side, and then before the and right here. All right. So I have one hot, steamy summer day. My friends and, hmm, does that make any sense? Let me read that. I. So this and is connecting just these two um, subjects of our sentence, right? So it's my friends and I. So I need to keep that one because it's talking about just who is the sentence about. So it's my friends and I. So I need to keep that one. All right. We're playing in the sprinklers and doing water games. So let's see. Um, one hot steamy summer day, my friends and I were playing in the sprinklers doing water games. I think this and is also connecting what we were doing. Just like my, it was connecting me and who I was doing something with. This is connecting the two things that we were doing. So I need that and and I need that and and I'm gonna keep them. This is an example of when you can keep two ands in a sentence because it's not connecting two different ideas or two different sentences. It's, it's adding to what's going on, your subject or some part of the sentence, right, of what you're doing. Let's check our next sentence out. My friend Maddie's mom had said it was time to go home, so that doesn't have any ands in it. The next sentence that has an and is right here. And it only has one and. So let's see if, it, if I need it or if I can take it away and rewrite the sentence. I named her Rosie and took her for a walk. Well, I think it's connecting two ideas about the dog that I just got, my new puppy. So I'm going to keep that and. Uh, let's check it out. Here we have one and, two ands. Uh oh, we've got three ands in this sentence. So let's see if we have to rewrite some of this. Let's see. On the walk. Rosie saw a squirrel, and I didn't have a good hold on the leash. Well, that seems like it would go together. So I could put a period there, but let me keep reading just to see. Right, so if I put a period there, maybe, I have Rosie ran away and got lost. Well, ran away, and that's telling, so that is okay, and got lost, that goes with what happened when she ran away. So I think I am going to put a period right here. I feel like seeing the squirrel and not having a good leash goes together better and with a period there to end, to end those two ideas. And then Rosie getting, getting away and getting lost, those two ideas go better together. 
So I'm going to rewrite this so that I have, so when I go to rewrite my, my draft, my next draft, I'm going to put a period there, no and, I'm going to keep my period there, okay? I looked all around the neighborhood and gave up and went home. Hmm. That has a lot. So I think I looked all around the neighborhood and gave up. Hmm. That kind of goes together, but I feel like giving up and going home goes better together than looking around the neighborhood. So I, cause I really kind of want this idea to kind of stand by itself. I want the reader to feel that, that sorrow and that, um, that scared feeling of when you can't, like when you lose a, a pet and you can't find them. So I'm going to decide to put my period here. And I'm going to rewrite this. So I'm going to say, I gave up and went home. So I'm going to, instead of the and, I'm going to cross that off and I'm going to put an I. So I gave up, we're going to keep that and, went home. And I got one more and to look at. So if my mom had seen her in the neighbor's yard and brought her home. Well, I think those ideas go together because bringing her home tells me what happens when mom saw her in the neighborhood. So I'm going to keep that and leave it like that. And then that, my last sentence doesn't have any ends in it. So I'm done. So when I go to rewrite my next draft, I know that I'm going to keep these two ands because they're connecting my subject and what I'm doing as my verb for more information. Um, I'm going to keep this and because it goes together on what I'm doing. I'm going to keep this and because it connects the two ideas that go together. And then I'm going to put a period and get rid of that and and make a new sentence with these two ideas. I'm going to get rid of this and and put a period after, at the end of this sentence and connect these two ideas with the and and keep that. And I'm going to keep that and. So I didn't do too, I think, I think my story is pretty good with using the and. Now it's your turn to give it a try. Good luck.